This video was brought to you by Slidebean, a platform for startups and small businesses to create professional investor decks and sales presentations. Get one free month by signing up at slidebean.com slash YouTube. If you're starting a new business, a financial model is a critical tool to estimate the potential of the company. How much do you plan to charge for your product? How much do you expect you'll pay to acquire a customer? How much time do you need to finish development? And how much will those salaries cost until you start generating revenue? I see tons of pitch decks that just show a crazy hockey stick chart that is not backed up by any data. They literally just came up with some numbers that looked good and exponential on a chart and put them on the deck. That's not the way it works. Investors expect you to do the math, estimate the money that you need to get to a milestone and provide an accurate estimate of your expenses. I honestly can't count the number of founders I've talked to that doesn't have this stuff figured out. I know that because five years ago, when we started Slidebean, we hadn't figured it out either. Hear me out on how lost we were. When we launched our product, we were charging $5 a month for it. And we had no idea that there was no possible way to get possible unit economics with that pricing. Here's what those unit economics could look like. $5 a month means $60 in annual revenue, assuming that each user sticks around for the whole year. That means that to make some money, we'd need to acquire customers for around $20 per customer acquisition, which is pretty much impossible for any SaaS company. We would have known that this made no sense if we had a financial model. And we do now, but it took us years to develop and to understand. And it's now become the backbone of my work as CEO. I work on that financial model spreadsheet two to three times per week estimating future revenues, adjusting with historical data, and understanding where and when we can expand our team and our growth efforts. Remember, Slidebean runs as a profitable company, so spending our profits efficiently is crucial. The sooner we know how much extra cash we're gonna have at a certain point, the sooner we can spend that cash, deploy it, and the sooner we can yield results, i.e. multiply that money. In the startup world, weeks can make a world of a difference. So the model that we use, the model that made us profitable, we are making it available to the world as a free download. In this video, I'm gonna show you how it works. There are many kinds of financial models. This one is closer to a forecasting model, which is used for financial planning and analysis. In a nutshell, what an effective model should do is, number one, take an estimated ad or marketing or sales spend Two, estimate the revenue that's going to be generated from that spend and three estimate the costs associated with generating that revenue like the team and the office and the servers all of this math combined should give you an answer on whether this combination of variables is going to make the company grow for early stage startups the model should take into account the team the team expansion and compare it to the available cash perhaps from a round of funding to understand what the exact company runway is if you've done your model right you should be able to scale your team and your budget understand the revenue impact of those changes and measure how much that will affect your runway okay so here are the basic parts of a model parts that you'll find on any financial model template online first the cogs sheet that stands for costs of goods sold and relates to the direct costs associated with providing your service. For a supermarket or an e-commerce store, COGS is very straightforward. It's the cost of the groceries or the items sold that the company pays to their suppliers. For Uber, the COGS would be the money that they pay to the drivers. Now, most software companies use this COG section for server costs and other essential tools that the platform needs to be functional. In our case, tools like Intercom and Amazon Web Services are all part of our COGS. If you compare revenue to COGS, what you get is the gross margin. That's the margin your company makes before accounting for the administrative expenses. Let's talk about the revenue sheet now. Revenue is used to track and estimate, well, your revenue. What is absolutely vital for any model is the driver of the revenue. Revenue doesn't just come, you have to bring it in actively. Depending on your business, you'll need to pay to market your app or you'll need to pay to get leads. You might even need to pay a sales team to close those deals. If, for example, your model estimates a $10,000 a month marketing budget that doesn't increase ever, it makes no sense that your revenue grows from zero to $10 million by year three. It's just impossible if you're not spending more. So there needs to be some correlation with reality here, and many of these benchmarks you can find online. 
Some examples, app installs using Facebook ads can cost from a few cents in low competition countries to around $2 in competitive markets like the US. There is no way to get Google search traffic for less than $1 per click, and most keywords require bids of $5, $6 or more. An average conversion rate on a landing page could be around 25%. 50% would be pretty remarkable. More than that is just unrealistic. As the company grows, acquiring customers with paid ads usually gets more expensive, not cheaper. All these numbers need to be taken into account in your model. Growth and revenue don't come magically. Now, your model should show the math behind your expected cost of acquisition and measure if that math was accurate at the end of the month when you get the actual results. This is absolutely key. I can't stress it enough. Next up is the SGNA sheet. Pretty much every expense that doesn't classify as COGS goes into the SGNA sheet. That's sales, general, and administrative expenses. And it includes payroll, marketing costs, travel, office expenses, rent, accounting, consultants, pretty much everything else. Once again, it's imperative that you connect these to your revenue estimations. On a SaaS platform, that's a software subscription, you could say that you'll need to hire a support agent for every 1,000 customers on the platform because the more customers you have, the bigger your support organization and your customer success organization needs to be. So you can connect the number of active users on your revenue sheet to the number of employees on your SGNA sheet. This lets you estimate your margins in the future. You can also connect the number of team members to the size of your office and therefore rent. Or you can compare the number of employees to the number of seats you'll need in your CRM. It's those connections that let you be more accurate about your growth expectations and your company expenses in the future. I challenge myself at the beginning of every month so that my projected SGNA expenses matches our actual expenses at the end of the month. Last but not least, the working capital and CAPEX sheet. This sheet is meant for assets owned by the company. If the company buys a car, that car is not exactly an expense, it's more of an asset. The car affects your cash flow, yes, because you no longer have the cash available in the bank, but the asset should be logged in the model. The number of assets the company has does have an impact on its valuation. Or for example, if the company goes bankrupt and needs to liquidate those assets. Desks, computers, and other machines are often assets and not expenses, and they need to be logged on this sheet. While most software companies don't need to pay that much attention to this section, e-commerce platforms do, because working capital is critical for them because they might need to pay suppliers before they collect the sales revenue. Now, all I've done for our template is implement an automatic computer buying system. So every time the number of employees increases, the model estimates that you'll need to buy a new computer for them. You can enable and disable this option, and of course, you can add purchases of your own. Now, all of these four sheets get consolidated in your monthly financial statement sheet. Now, these sheets provide you with a summary of your gross margin, your net income per month, cash in the bank, and so on. Taxes at the end of the year are also automatically estimated based on your profit. All of this stuff gets consolidated on the annual sheet, and that's where you have your official growth estimations. Now, I added a few sheets of my own to this template, so let me tell you about those. The team and salaries sheet. Now this sheet lets you automatically estimate future hires without having to dig directly into the SGNA spreadsheet. So you may, for example, define your dev team, how often do you expect to hire new team members and how often do you plan to adjust their salary? Now it's designed with employee categories in mind, so you shouldn't add each employee by name, instead classify your team in each one of these buckets. Now make sure that you use the company cost for their salary line, not the actual salary that's paid out to them. In other words, include your payroll costs here so that you don't have to deal with those on a separate line. The projections sheet. Now, this is where the magic happens. Programming all of these formulas is hard. You need some Excel skills to do it as well as time, and founders don't have a whole lot of that. So I've worked on creating some pre-built financial models for SaaS, e-commerce and ad-based businesses, say a blog or a social network. They already have all of these formulas programmed in, so all you need to do is add your pricing and your marketing variables and your team scaling variables, and voila. Now, the clean model without any programming and any projection formulas is completely free, and you can download a copy in slidebill.com slash financials. But you can also download a copy of these three made templates for just 79 bucks. And if you need help programming in more complex business models, our team is available to help. All of the templates are available at slideme.com financial. All right, end of commercial. The KPIs sheet. 
I've also added charts and a KPI sheet that lets you visually check the results of the model, as well as giving you some critical insights like an estimate of the capital that you'll need to raise. It can also tell you if you're gonna reach profitability within the next five years. That's also included in the model. All right, so some important announcements. If you didn't know, we have a Discord server around our YouTube channels. You can join completely free and join a one hour Q&A we do after each one of these video launches, hosted by yours truly. We'll also create a financial model channel so you can exchange ideas with the rest of the community. Also, our giveaway for today. The first 100 people to purchase any of our SaaS or e-commerce or ad-based financial models will also get a free one-year Slidebean plan so you can put those impressive numbers into a solid investor deck. So 79 for our built model plus a Slidebean starter plan. It doesn't get better than that. Last but not least, I want a YouTube plink. The team wants a YouTube plink and we don't get to buy one. We just need to reach 100,000 subscribers. And if you haven't done so, now is the time to do it. That is all for today. We'll see you next week.